let's uh let's have you take us to the brain a little bit let's start getting into this mm -hmm. uh mold brain thing because you know there's a big difference between the the mental health dysfunction caused by let's say diabetes or just standard american diet or, or even endotoxemia but mold brain is something different um it is yeah i'd love to hear you speak to that a little bit <laughs> yeah it's it's so unlike I, I i say that you know when you and i learned this with candida as before I was into mold, you know, way early in practice, if somebody had a candida overgrowth and I put them on antifungals and I didn't do the homework to make sure they were pooping and, you know, all this kind of stuff so they could get it out, it would go to the mind. That's the people I would get the phone call to my office. I'm feeling so anxious. I can't sleep. I'm feeling suicidal. You know, this is when I was like, oh, this is a big deal. You know, this goes to the brain. Fungus, for some reason, goes to the brain. It affects your mind. It affects your mood. Um, and I really do think it's part of Mold's Jedi mind trick. You know, it's like, if, again, taking the 10,000 foot view, which I really, I'm really big about this. Like I get into the minutia so I can back, back out and be simple mm -hmm. and bring things into the simple. When I look at stealth infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr or now COVID, um, and I look at mold, those other infections need you alive to survive. Mm -hmm. They're living off of you basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they need you that's why you just limp you don't you know i mean there are people who die of lyme carditis i will i want to just respect that but the majority of people are limping around dealing with chronic illness undiagnosed lyme and are doing kind of okay not great with mold it wants to compost you yeah. its job is to compost previously living organic material and i say that over and over again so that we stop and think about are you vitalizing your body or are you sending messages through your lifestyle, through your energetic practice or spiritual practice, through your, you know, sleep, relationships, all that kind of stuff, diet, of course, are you sending messages of, nah, go ahead, mold, take over. I'm not using it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not moving your body every day, you're sending a message for something that's a composter to come in and help out. So mold was ju would just assume compost you. So I think that it goes into the brain tissue and it's sending that message of like, give up, just give up. Cause we're here. We're here to take care of it. Don't worry. You don't need to live anymore. We, we got it. We'll take over from here. Thinking that what the job they're being called to do is to help you kick off and they can compost you. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yeah. I mean, it's just when I think about that and, and I've seen it in people, you know, patient after patient after patient. And now I'm, in my membership, you know, I get to talk with lots more people at one time and it's just like, wow, it is, it is really a dedication. And part of, part of getting better from this is having a daily dedication to getting better. Yeah. And it is not something you can skip on a daily basis and whatever that looks like, whether it's today, I'm going to make some greens. I know I don't won't really have the energy for it, but I'm going to make some greens. I'm going to do it. Or today I know it's really icky and cold outside but I'm going to spend five minutes outside. Those are all little messages through your micro behaviors that are telling mold. Nope. That's not what you've been called here to do. I'm sorry. I confused you. You know, nope. I'm using this body. I want it to stick around.